there we go. Green Gem and Zip Lizard, we're good. We didn't look at the story last time, but let, let's build a few up. We'll probably look at the story at the end of this one. Uh, welcome back to Kaze and the Wild Masks. I'm the Comic Foil, and um, yeah, we've been... The levels are definitely harder here at... Uh, in what I'm pretty sure is the last world of the game. Oh, we're doing this again. Okay, we're doing another stop-and-go station. Yeah, don't knock me in the water here. So, yeah, we've only been able to get, like, two episodes max done lately. Uh, or only uh, two levels done lately per episode because they've gotten harder for me to get down. Okay, I had a feeling. I had a feeling there'd be a warp gate in here. Hopefully it's the first half of the warp gate. And I didn't miss something at the beginning of the level. Okay, we need to get 13 of these little guys. Now, since we don't have the shark mask, we don't actually have the power to swim underwater. We can just kind of... Yeah, use our sense of buoyancy. We drop underwater when we hit the surface, but we can't, like, stay under there. So if we want to get something under the water, we have to jump in from above and time it properly. Uh, yeah, ran out of time. Ah, oh, so close, though. In fact, the running out of time, like, hit animation actually got us there. Okay, so let's just be a little bit more daring this time. Yeah, already we're doing a lot better. We were playing too careful. Okay, out of the way, guys. I guess if you're doing, like, a 100% speedrun, yeah, it looks like these greens appear the same way each time, so you could actually plan out your route. You can know ahead of time where they're going to appear. I really like the, uh, dragon fruit porcupines there, even though they just damaged me. Good to check down here for other secrets. No, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Oh, it's you! Okay, you're also on the stop-and-go powers. It's the scary anglerfish guy. So we're combining different stop-and-go station mechanics now. Okay, and here is our shark. Have we seen any letters yet? I don't think... I don't think I even saw the letter K yet. Oh, I guess I did see the letter K because it says I collected it. All right. And we should also remember that we can yeah, accelerate. So we have a lot more ease of movement through here. And it looks like we're going to need that ease of movement to stay away from this jerkwad. Uh, try and keep an eye out for any, um, for any false walls that might be here. Oh, okay. Tricky, tricky, tricky. No, not tricky enough. I went back to check that one wall. That's why I even got hit there. Okay, I get the A. Good to know I'm not missing any letters yet. Okay, I guess I'll take this. I don't like that I got hit. I don't like getting hit, but what can you do? We're right by the checkpoint, so... You know, it, it, it's all good. We could do a little... I'm understanding a little bit better how these turret guys work. And what their exact firing patterns are, so... Yes, I am going back for just one red gem. Okay, we're already at 96. Meaning we're already... We almost have full red collection.
kill the pickle. Okay, yeah, those guys like the higher incense of the two, we can remember that. There haven't been too many shark levels, which I don't mind too much. I don't... The underwater levels in this game are pretty good. They all control pretty well, but it's still... I'd rather be not in the water than in the water. Even though it controls well. They, like, they throw a lot of junk at you in the water stages. Whoa. Okay. I, like, managed to, like, like, iframe through two of them. I guess, I guess their hair isn't a hitbox. The hair on the crabs. On the little pineapple, pineapple crabs. The little pineappers. Uh, I want that one right. Oh, uh, it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth it. Why'd I come back? That wasn't even close to worth it. Okay, but with my uh, dash, I can, like, outrun this guy pretty easily. So... Yeah, how did I get... Was it a fluke that I got through those guys before? It looks like I'm supposed to use a light to get through them. I think it's a fluke that I did it before. didn't bode well. The bode was not well. In other news, I'm playing through um, Ace Attorney... Ace Attorney Invest... Uh, no, the Great Ace Attorney again. Which, for some reason, I want to call uh, Ace Attorney Investigations a lot, but that's not correct. Ace Attorney Investigations are the ones with uh, Edgeworth, which I played the first one of that. I've never played the second one, because the second one never came out here in America, though I know there's good fan translations out there. Um, no, I've been playing The Great Ace Attorney. Uh, so the one on the Switch, you know, is a collection of the two games which they brought to America for the first time in this collection for the Switch. Um, it's not just for the Switch, I think it's on Steam and everything else, too. But, uh, yeah, I beat the first one, and then I decided to take a break, because just, I, di I didn't want to... I try never to play two games of the same franchise in a row, if I can help it, because I don't want to, like, wear myself out on a game. I don't want to get burnout like I've gotten before with Pokemon and stuff like that. Um, so... Yeah, I beat what was the first game in the collection, really liked it, and then played some other things like uh, Live Alive. Really liked Live Alive, too. And now I'm back with uh, The Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve, which has been fun. Um, the weirdest thing about it is one of the cases in the game is a case that supposedly happened between the fourth and fifth cases of The Great Ace Attorney Adventures? Am I gonna need an attempts counter for this one, too? Because, yeah, this is tough. This is some tough underwater Donkey Kong country. These don't play very much like Donkey Kong country at all, actually. These, these swim controls are far too smooth to be like the old SNES Donkey Kong country. Um, they're not too unlike how Donkey Kong swims in the newer games. Okay. Those just, they fire faster than I think they're going to. I always think I have enough time to sneak in front of it, and I do. It's that, it's that plant in particular that keeps getting me. And 
down. But it's okay, I will overcome. I've been definitely getting a lot of good, like, like super tricky, like, styling on this angler fish. Gotten better at better, better and better at dodging him. The, the function of the angler fish is to make you want to hurry and to make you make stupid mistakes like that. Is that. Oh, I thought maybe that back there with the red. That's. That's like the seedling of a dead enemy or something. No, there's definitely. Okay, alright. It's a weird way to hide something, but sure. Oh, I don't like these patterns. These are hard patterns. This is becoming a bullet hell. I'm playing R-Type. Okay, 95. So I only need five more. So we don't need to worry too much about getting more red gems. Yeah, so we only need one more. And we know where we're going to get one of them because we're going to have to use that secret passage back there again to get the E. Down here, yes. Yeah, they, ha they hide the E actually completely out of view. Which is very, very rude of them. Um, I know you're probably hiding a green portal around here somewhere, too. No, I never found where the other portal was. This keeps happening to me now in all these new levels, is I go in and then I have no idea where the portal is. For the greens, I, I guess I'll jump back in. Okay, I see it up there. Good hiding, good hiding. Huh? it was a little smiley face. Also, I love... I love the detail that these guys have snorkels when they're in the water. I think that's so funny. Up. Missed on that pass. Yeah, there's a logic to this one of, like, kind of continuing in a circle the same way these are going. Oh, except for that one. That one makes me turn around. Okay, we got it. Okay, and again, let me just get through this level now a second time, which will be easier now that I already have all the reds and all the letters and I don't have to worry about collecting anything. Okay. I do like that it's only two bonuses per level. In uh, Donkey Kong Country games, you were never really sure how many bonus levels there would be per, per level. Sometimes there were like three or four, sometimes there were none at all. So it's kind of nice having a consistent two. You always kind of know what you're looking for in each level. Here we go. Grab the heart for my little friend. Okay, we got kind of like a good old factory level. You wouldn't know it if you don't know Donkey Kong very well, but uh, factories hold a uh, long-standing place in Donkey Kong Country games. Uh, since the first game, uh, factories were a reoccurring level type. Oh, great. It's our old friend, the tiger. <laughs> I just realized something. I love all the masks but all the mask levels make me extremely nervous because they all, yeah, require the masks to do something, like, really hard. It's That's when the game gets a lot harder because it gives you... You know it's going to get harder because it's giving you a tool that makes it more complex. me really uh miss my hover too because you can't do the you can't do the hover while you're wearing the tiger mask but yeah i don't think you can do the hover when you're wearing any of the masks except maybe the shark mask and even then that's only when you're 
above water, which you aren't most of the time if you're using the tiger. Uh, yeah, that looks like something. I had just started to think, like, how, how tall are these levels? How vertical are they? Okay. And over here. Yeah, at least these green crystals aren't appearing at complete random. Like, the designers have definitely put thought into where they're going to appear for your run. There's a logic to moving through them, even if you don't know it yet the first time you go in. Okay, so that's the first green crystal. So I didn't miss any green crystals this time. Yeah, the way this game does extra collectibles and extra, like, what?! Oh, I hit dash, and I guess I just didn't... Maybe I didn't really hit dash, or maybe I was already not. Okay. I'm not gonna blame the game on that for missing an input, because in all likelihood, that really was just my own mistake. Game, don't do stuff like that to me while I'm complimenting you. I will take my compliment right back. No, I won't. This game's really good. Um... Yeah, I just really like the the tasks in general. The red, green, yellow gems. It's just very easy to understand what is expected of you in each level for the 100%. Um, don't, don't ask me what I did there. I don't, e I don't even know what I was doing there. That was just a poor judgment on my part. I, like, remembered for a second that I was still trying to get red gems, and I jumped past one of them, and then I weirdly panicked. It's because I'm nervous about... It's because I'm nervous about when these platforms are gonna drop me. Like, it's very clear what parts of the tracks they're up for, because, you know, they're, like, phased out, but... Like, are they going to... Is the platform going to drop really quickly or really slowly? It's hard to tell. And I don't want to be there to find out. Alright. We've done this before. We don't, we don't need to be panicking so much. This is the easy part. That is a part, though, where, like, I would have really liked to still have my hover. But tigers can't hover. Only only bunnies can hover. Everybody knows that. Tigers don't fly, bunnies do. Okay, okay, okay. See, I'm paying attention. I'm paying a lot of attention to these platforms right now and what they're going to do. Then we got a Z up here. Drop it down. Oh! Okay, a little scary, but... Oh! Like... Yeah, I'm looking at it too much at once. I was thinking in a future tense and not in a present tense. You gotta just, you gotta just, like, be in the moment, man. Up here? That's alright. I feel like, I feel like I have a handle on this level. I feel like this level's going a lot smoother than the sh shark level I just did. Yeah, that's perfectly timed there. Cool, okay. Okay, you're not going to drop me yet? You're not going to drop me yet? Oh, oh, oh. oh, we're rising. Acid level's rising. Okay, game. Okay. Um... Is it past that pickle? Is there a green past that pickle? We see now where all the letters are. We just need to get past the pickle. 
don't want to be in a pickle, we want to be past one. You want to get, it's a metaphor, you want to get past the adversity in your life. But you know what, if you're always trying to think about getting past adversity, it means you're not living in the moment. You're like, just like waiting for future things. It's like waiting for God O. You shouldn't just wait for good things to happen to you. You should live presently in your life. Try and make things better now, and more importantly, try and enjoy your life now, because it's not always going to be this way. If you just, you know, find yourself always waiting for some nondescript thing in the future to happen, then you're going to jump right into lava, because you were waiting for that platform to reappear. And then you're going to do it again, because you're dumb. Any, uh, anybody out there read Waiting for Yato? Any of you, uh, anybody in their high school English classes? Anybody, even rarer still, I'm, I'm sorry, um, <laughs> even rarer still, anybody out there who likes Waiting for Gato, the play by Samuel Beckett? We're being kind of highbrow here. Where are my existentialists at? That's okay. I know I'm the only person who cares about that sort of thing on here. On the whole of YouTube. That that's me letting my uh artsy side show. That's me showing my uh pretentious col uh college theater major side. If any of you do have to talk about Winnie Forgato in high school or any other- Whoa! That was very generous. Did you see that? Did you see that? I was definitely standing on that platform when it wasn't even up. That was very nice of this game to allow that. Oh! Oh! Ho, ho. Burned my feet on the way up. Because I'm being really greedy. I want the letter and the red gems and the green gem. I want it all on one run. Yeah, I'm being I'm being too greedy. Yeah, for any of you who have to read Waiting for Gato in an English class, hit me up and I'll explain it to you. Basically say it's about the human condition that we're always waiting for things to make, for external things to make things better instead of acting ourselves. Say that, I just wrote a, uh, there, I just wrote a high school essay for you. You don't even have to credit me. Feel free to plagiarize that. Also, if they're doing The Great Gatsby, um, the, bill the billboard is the eyes of God judging everyone. Anybody have a... I think I've talked about this on the channel before in, like, other Let's Plays. Any books that you had to read for high school that you really liked, and books you had to read for high school that you really didn't like. Okay, we made it into the portal. Good, now we can get this green gem, and then even if we die after afterwards, we... Which we will, which we will die afterwards, and we'll die during... We will die a million deaths while playing Kaze and the Wild Masks, but it's okay because we are living in the moment. We are being present. This is what Samuel Beckett wanted, probably. Samuel Beckett was a little bit of a jerk, actually. That's the real separating the art from the artist there, is with people who are dead. That's the best time to separate art from the artist, because, um... Ah, oh, man. Um, Samuel Beckett studied under another great playwright, uh, Edward Albee, and apparently made a lot of advances towards her daughter, which... towards his daughter, which his daughter did not like. She was just not that into you, bro.
You know what they say about Samuel Beckett, he could flirt, but he had a terrible endgame. Haha. <laughs> That's a really bad highbrow joke, actually. He wrote another play called Endgame. When, um, when Marvel announced that the fourth Avengers movie would be called Avengers Endgame, and that would be the, you know, finale to the whole Infinity Gauntlet saga, all me and my nerdy theater friends could think of is... is the Samuel Beckett play Endgame. See, a lot of Samuel Beckett's plays are, like, two people sitting around doing nothing. It's plays where nothing happens. That's kind of the idea of them. Which means they're plays that are very easy to stage. Um, I think Endgame is the one where there's people sitting in buckets. Or, like, big, like, jars. They're sort of like the guys from uh, Getting Over It with Benny Ben Potty. Oh, jeez. Okay, it makes me go around the other side to grab it. Okay. But I got everything, right? I'm pretty sure I got everything. Very good. Except for the no damage crown. That's okay. Those don't exist. We're not going to worry about them. Oh, yeah. Now I hit restart level. I'm glad it still gives me the animation of it going to the next level, though. Okay, so I think... Oh, that's interesting. So, by my count, this should be the last regular level. Yes. Um, and then... But the bonus level is positioned after it. So, you know what? At the risk of making this episode a little bit longer, I'm going to try and tackle this level this episode. Anything back here? Yes! Okay, they're hiding the green right at the beginning. It's always funny when they do that. That's the, like, I wanted to make sure you were paying attention hidden item. Oh, I was almost... I was, a, I was about to say easy, but before I could utter it out, I got hit. That, yeah, I don't know, that fireball's got, like, a little bit more of a hitbox, I guess, than I'm expecting it to. I'm expecting to be able to just, like, zip out from under it. Okay. Okay, let's see what you got, final lava world of Carrot Land. Because do not forget, this world is called Carrot Land. Which makes me feel like it was once, like, the capital of, like, the bunny kingdom or bunny civilization. It doesn't have to have been a kingdom. Because, you know, in things it's always, like, if it's called a kingdom, it's a good place. But if it's called a... Whoops. If a country's called a kingdom, it's good, but if a country's called a empire, it's evil, even though those are essentially the same things. Uh, they're ruled by one person, but you know, I'm not all that big on uh, kingdoms either. I'm not a huge monarchy guy, gotta be honest. Not to insult my friends over there in the UK and your royal family, I know that's like a lot of fun for you guys. I guess I just don't really get it. Maybe it's because I'm an American and I wasn't raised to get that sort of thing, but I've never been, like, really excited about stuff happening in the royal family. And don't get me wrong, there's Americans here that get excited over stuff with the royal family, like weddings and stuff. Um, it's not like I'm celebrating when uh, Queen Elizabeth dies or anything like that, or Princess Diana or anything, you know. Sad stuff happens, but I'm not going crazy over the weddings, you know? And there's like, my older relatives, like, tuning in to watch, like, so excited, and I'm like, that, that, that's not even our, like, that's not even your queen. Maybe it's more fun when it's not your queen, and they could just be a celebrity without holding any kind of implied political power over you. I, I mean, I know, oh, those are spikes, okay. Like, I know the royal family is more of, like, a, more of a, like, national treasure than it is a ruling body in, UK, in the UK at this point, too. Like, you actually have, like, Democrat... Oh, nice. 
like, you have your Prime Minister and stuff like that. Whoops. It's just, like, kind of weird that you have, like, a mascot. It, it, it's... Oh my gosh, it's just something that's really weird from my limited American perspective, so... Sorry, Robin, your, your country's weird. This is... This is a little bit tricky, the fact that the, um... That this little Ferris wheel dealy is going opposite the way of the evil spinning pumpkin. not a political take for me about the royal family, I hope, either. I mean, it's political in that all things about people are inherently political. That's what politics is. It's the study of people from the Greek word polis. Um, but I don't usually want to make uh, sweeping statements about the English government because I don't understand it very well. It's a good way for me to sound like I don't know what I'm talking about, because I wouldn't. Oh, I couldn't go into... I was trying to go into another ground pound from there. That was my problem. Okay, but I have both of the green crystals now, and we're at the very beginning of the level. Still. Well, yeah, both the green crystals. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Just have to worry about red and yellow. Worry about little gems and letters. And staying alive, of course. Including with this K that I don't like. I have to remember that I can't go into a hover after I bounce off an enemy. That has been the cause of many of my deaths through this entire game. This game should have a total death counter the way Celeste does. I'd be very interested to know how many times total I've died. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Link to the Past has one of those. It counts your total deaths at the end. And at the time, back in... Well, not the 90s, because I didn't play it until the early 2000s. I played the GBA version of it. Um, that was very upsetting to me, because other people showed me, like how many times they had died, and it was so much lower than mine. Leading to my belief that I was just not very good at video games at all. And that's hard to hear when video games is like one of your main hobbies, and you're apparently not very good at it. But I think I'm fine. I think I'm good enough at video games. I think I'm good enough to be dangerous. Sorry, got got a little nervous there. Had to. I got I got cold feet, and this is a very hot level. Okay, you don't need to go up there. No, 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 no! I these Ferris wheels are messing me up, man. I don't know what it is about them. I guess I'm just very bad at measuring their trajectory in my head. I'm very bad at anticipating where they're going to be when I need them. Whoop. And they stay under the lava for just a little bit too long, but I think I've found the best way now to pick up that K. The way I was doing it before was not very efficient. Yeah, I'm going back for that one. Yeah, I'll go over just to be safe, and... Oh, what I wouldn't give for... some type of... 
Oh, okay. There we go. But I wouldn't give for a checkpoint right about now. Okay, we're gonna go on this platform so that we can hover. Okay, fireballs. Just don't be out of place. Good checkpoint. Thank you. Okay, we got K and A. We got 64 red gems. We don't need too many more of them. Ah! Uh, man, Ferris wheels. Do, 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 do. Be the bunny. Be one with Kaze and be the bunny. When I was in college, I was in a show called Urinetown. I've talked about this before, but I played the character uh, Caldwell B. Cladwell in Urinetown, so I had the song Don't Be the Bunny. So, little thing that's only going to be funny to me. That I now have to be the bunny. Caldwell B. Cladwell is like a... Um, he's like a stereotypical evil capitalist. And it's a song about, like, him singing to his daughter about, like, oh, don't be like the common people because they exist only for us to oppress. Okay, I gotta, uh, I gotta spin through that one. I was expecting to have to ground pound, but then the fireballs kept coming and they don't stop coming. people still recognize a uh, reference to Smash Mouth nowadays? I know a lot of people watching my channel are younger than me and don't always get my references, but that's like a 90s thing that has been kept alive by the sheer meaniness of it, I think. Because, um, you know, Shrek. Yeah, All-Star by Smash Mouth as appearing in the to some greatest movie ever made Shrek. Um, what? I just couldn't seem to pick up enough speed there. Okay. What, was I just, like, rabbit-footing a bit too much there? Not pussy-footing, rabbit-footing. Okay. Whoa. Okay, that just barely worked. That platform is very mean there because it's time to come out, like, just in time that you have to have already jumped. Ugh, no, I should be landing on the platform so that I can get the hover like I did the first time. So you take multiple attempts at things, and then you're, th then you're like angry that you missed it before. So you start playing worse. I believe this is what the young gamers refer to as tilting. That's not even a young gamer thing. That's just like something they talk about in fighting game tournaments. I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. Ah! But I didn't need it. That's not why I died. Now, Spongebob lines. As a 90s kid, Spongebob came out, like, in 1999, the original, so it's not really a 90s thing, it's a 2000s thing. Sorry, that was a, uh, coughing fit from me that I'll have just edited out, but, uh, <clears throat> it does make me happy that Spongebob Squarepants references are, like, evergreen. There's always... People generally know what you're referencing. I mean, I know a lot of people I talk to are my own age, but younger people know it from the memes. Memes have kept Spongebob alive. 
if I talk about an Alaskan bullworm or um, how uh, yeah I guess I just need to do that part faster if I say something is wombo wombology the study of wombo like Spongebob has to be one of the most quotable shows of all time I didn't watch very much of it after season three, I want to say, after after the first movie came out. And for a while, I didn't like the movie either. Um, now I kind of, now I actually like the movie, but um, yeah, I just wasn't as into the humor after that season. And it's been a long time since then, then and I hear that the quality of it has kind of come back and forth with how funny it is because it's gone through probably a few more eras of itself since then. I don't know what was going on with those cycles. Yeah, those cycles just kind of screwed me over. It wasn't really a good thing for me to do there. You can tell this game they had the speedrunners at least partially in mind, because a lot of stuff is such a way where if you're doing it really well, you get up to things right on the time for its cycle. So if you were to, like, run through a level at max speed, you would arrive just in time for, like, the elevator to come out of the lava or for the guy you gotta bounce off of to be in position. I also know this episode is longer than I wanted it to be, and that anxiety of not wanting the episode to be too long is causing me to make a lot of mistakes. But you can't think about the anxiety. You can't think about trying to be entertaining. You gotta come back to why I'm playing this game in the first place, which is because I love me a good side-scroller. We are here because we love video games. We're certainly not here because we're good at video games. Which is still up for debate. Oh my gosh, and the, the, it's, it's right there. So we have to get that cloud to have enough reds. We, we have to get it or we won't have enough. But it's, it's really hard to move fast enough to not get hit by the fire there. Can I like run back on that platform and wait until after the fire starts going maybe? really need to try and get every red gem I can too because even with that big one at the end I only had uh, like 102 gems so if I miss more than a couple I won't have enough. There! There! Like what am I supposed to do with that? I guess I could be ground pounding if I like see it ahead of time. I could ground pound to get like a little bit more height. It's just, it's, it's, it's a little rude, because that doesn't give me a good place to land. That's very upsetting to me. Especially when I feel like I'm making really good time on a stage, and it feels like, oh man, I'm going, like, too fast for the stage's cycles. That's when you know a game really hasn't been made with speedrunners in mind. That, that's something uh, other channels could explain better than I can, right? It, There we go. Huh. 
Achievement unlocked, Historian. I think that's from getting all the story segments. Yeah, extra scene. I don't know if that's for beating that level or for getting all red gems or what, but... Oh, this is because I got every green gem. Oh, boy. Oh, goodness. Are you the... Are you the orig original clan leader from the story? Are you the one that was sealed away? Interesting. Oh yeah, these are like his people, the like dragon people. Or they could just be lizards. They could just be lizards. Wait, what is the achievement I got there? Interesting. Okay, so that means we got a bonus level unlocked and we have Typhoon's Tussle. And look back there, we can see the, uh, that looks like the apprentice from the story. Uh, but we're not going to do either of these today. We are going to look at all of our stories back here. Nice. Um, oh, so what's that sim? What's this symbol here? Hmm. Okay, so. Right, these guys were... It looked like they were turning themselves into the statues... Yeah, the, um, masks. They're creating the other wild masks. Oh, and it looks like the rabbits also also turned into gems. Okay. Okay, so there's the, uh, evil apprentice. But the power of their gems took the apprentice's scepter away. And it looks like it got, yeah, he, um... The apprentice got sucked up into the scepter, and there it waited in the temple until uh, Kaze and her brother, or whatever relation that friend is, uh, came and uncovered it. And that brings us to the beginning of this game. Okay. So what's this then? Is this? I think this is for finish beating the final boss. And this is for beating the final boss and having all the red gems, I think. Because if I go back to the overworld, I didn't miss any red gems, did I? <gasps> I did! I did! Oh no! Oh, but that's because um, we still have to do the bonus level. The last one should be in the bonus level. Yes, and we will do that next time. So, I'm the Comic Foil. Uh, depending on how much of an endgame there is to this, next episode might be the last one. I don't know. Maybe I'll, get, like, have that one run a little longer like this one has. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, this has been going on too long. My voice hurts. I'll see you later.